The BGM-71 TOW, tube-launched, optically tracked, wire-guided, is an American anti-tank missile. TOW replaced much smaller missiles like the SS.10 and NTAC, offering roughly twice the effective range, a more powerful warhead, and a greatly improved semi-automatic guidance system that could also be equipped with infrared cameras for nighttime use. First produced in 1970, TOW is one of the most widely used anti-tank guided missiles. It can be found in a wide variety of manually carried and vehicle-mounted forms, as well as widespread use on helicopters. Originally designed by Hughes Aircraft in the 1960s, the weapon is currently produced by Raytheon. The US Army is seeking a replacement for the TOW through the Close Combat Missile System heavy effort. Objectives are for a weapon with increased range out to 10,000 meters or more, as well as greater speed, the ability to fire on the move, and lock-on before and after launch capability, while retaining similar launcher size and arming distance. The Army hopes to field the CCMSH sometime between 2028 and 2032. In 1997, Raytheon Company purchased Hughes Electronics from General Motors Corporation, so the development and production of tow systems now come under the Raytheon brand. The weapon is used in anti-armor, anti-bunker, anti-fortification, and anti-amphibious landing roles. Tow is in service with over 45 militaries, and is integrated on over 15,000 ground, vehicle, and helicopter platforms worldwide. In its basic infantry form, the system breaks down into a number of modules. A folding tripod mount, a launch tube, into the rear of which encased missiles are inserted, a mandatory day sight tracker unit, which can be augmented with an optional ANTOS-4 or ANTOS-4A gas-cooled night sight, or an all-in-one tracker unit on the M41IDAS version, and a traversing unit, which mounts onto the tripod and carries the launch tube in sight, that also includes the weapon's trigger and the bridging clamp, which mates with the missile's umbilical data connector. In addition to this main assembly, there is a separate fire control system module, which performs all guidance calculations, and a battery pack to power the system. These two modules link to each other, with the FCS then linked to the day sight with the cable. When the target is sighted and the trigger is pulled, there is a 1.5 second firing delay, while the missile spins up its internal gyroscope, and the thermal battery reaches operating temperature. Once this concludes, the launch motor fires through the rear nozzle propelling the missile from the tube. This soft launch motor fires for only 10 seconds, and burns out before the missile has exited the tube. As the missile exits the launch tube, first four wings just forward of the flight motor spring open forwards, followed by four tail control surfaces, which flip open rearwards, as the missile completely exits the launch tube. As the wings fully extend at about 7 meters from the launcher, the flight motor ignites, boosting the missile's speed to approximately 600 miles per hour, 1000 kilometers per hour, during its burn time. At 0.18 seconds after launch, around 65 meters from the launcher, the warhead is armed by G-forces from acceleration by the flight motor, a safety feature intended to protect the operator if the flight motor fails to ignite. The flight motor burns out 1.6 seconds after launch, with the missile gliding for the remainder of its flight time. After the tracker captures the missile, IR sensors bore sighted to the day sight tracker, continuously monitored the position of an IR beacon on the missile's tail relative to the line of sight, with the FCS generating course corrections, which are sent via the command link to the missile's integral flight control unit. The missile then corrects its flight path via the control surface actuators. The operator keeps the sight's crosshair centered over the target until impact. If the missile fails to strike a target, the command wires are automatically cut at 3,000 meters on the original tow, and 3,750 meters on most current production tows. An automatic wire cut also occurs if the track fails to detect the missile's thermal beacon within 1.85 seconds of launching. The tow missile was continually upgraded, with an improved tow missile, ITO, appearing in 1978, that had a new warhead triggered by a long probe, which was extended after launch, that gave a standoff distance of 15 in, 380 mm, for improved armor penetration. The 1983 TOW 2, featured a larger 5.9 kg, 13 pounds, warhead, with a 21.25 in, 540 mm, extensible probe, improved guidance, and a motor that provided around 30% more thrust. This was followed by the TOW 2AB, which appeared in 1987. Hughes developed a tow missile with a wireless data link in 1989, referred to as tow 2 but this weapon was not adopted for use by the US military. Raytheon continued to develop improvements to the tow line, but its FOT, follow-on to tow, program was cancelled in 1998, and its tow French Frank, tow fire and forget, program was cut short on 30 November 2001, because of funding limitations. In 2001 and 2002, Raytheon and the US Army worked together on an extended range TOW 2B variant, initially referred to as TOW 2B, or, but now called TOW 2B Arrow, which is a special nose cap that increases range to 4.5 km TOW 2B has top attack capability. 
Although this missile has been in production since 2004, no U.S. Army designation has yet been assigned. Wireless versions of the TOE-2A, TOE-2B, and TOE-2B Arrow have been developed that use a stealthy one-way radio link, identified with the suffix RF. These missiles require no special alterations to the launcher, since the RF transmitter is encased along with the missile, and uses the standard umbilical data connector. The TOE missile in its current variations is not a fire-and-forget weapon, and like most second-generation wire-guided missiles, has semi-automatic command line of sight guidance. This means that the guidance system is directly linked to the platform, and requires that the target be kept in the shooter's line of sight until the missile impacts. A fire-and-forget TOE tow variant, TOE tow French Frank, was under development but was cancelled by the Army in 2002. In October 2012, Raytheon received a contract to produce 6,676 TOE wireless guided missiles for the U.S. military. Missiles that will be produced include the BGM-71E TOE-2A, the BGM-71F TOE-2B, the TOE-2B Arrow, and the BGM-71H TOE Bunker Buster. By 2013, the U.S. Marine Corps had retired the air-launched TOE missile. The initial production contract was awarded to Hughes on 28 June 1968, and the final contract on 29 November 1968. On 10 June 1969, Chrysler's Huntsville Division was awarded the second source contract. A number of problems emerged with the initial design, notably the early versions of the rocket motors, which sometimes ejected bits of fuel still on fire, and presented a hazard to the gunners. Mickham suggested a new motor using head and suspended double base fuel from the M72 law, which solved this issue. The IR source also had issues due to its use of a fine metal filament that ignited the arc lamp which often broke during firing, but repeated tests and modifications solved this. Finally, the launch tube was designed to be sealed at both ends, with the rear seal being blown off by the rocket motor, and the front by pressurized gas, released by the guidance system's gyroscope. In practice, both proved unreliable, but remedial action solved the problems. Production began at USAF plant number 44, and, the first production examples were delivered in August 1969. In September 1973 training battalions had formed up, and by 30 September 1970, the TOW had replaced the Army's existing heavy anti-tank weapon, the M40 recoilless rifle. It increasingly replaced the French ANTAC missiles purchased earlier. In the fall of 1958, the Army's Office of Ordnance Research and Development formed the Ad Hoc Working Group at the Ballistic Research Laboratories to define a future replacement for the SS.10 and 11. The team included members from Picatinny Arsenal, Frankfurt Arsenal, Redstone Arsenal, Water Light Arsenal, Detroit Arsenal, and Harry Diamond Laboratories. The group almost immediately decided not to attempt to define a weapon concept, and instead spent the next two years studying the problem, while researching the possibility of using alternative guidance systems, and continually watching foreign developments where the US was lagging. In the early summer of 1961, the Chief of Ordnance asked Brazilian Rails to deliver a formal definition for what was then known as the Heavy Assault Weapon, for the Long Range Time Period, or HAW for short. They asked for a weapon to be delivered sometime between 1965 and 1970. Brazilian Rails assigned the work to the Armored Systems Evaluation Branch of the Weapon Systems Laboratory. David Hardison, the branch chief, reconvened the ad hoc panel to review a long list of 27 design proposals, all of which were found lacking. 